So this is a, a so uh, take uh, the uh, if you take uh, many of these uh, uh, LC circuits, right? You, you can think uh, so one of these circuits was something like this, right? Uh, you put here a capacitor and inductance, uh, and uh, and you had the. So you see, you can keep on adding uh, uh, in series many of these. And you keep on going, all with the same, uh, all uh, uh, inductances with the same inductance, and the same, uh, and, and uh, okay, uh, you can ground this uh, to zero here, for instance. So, so, so this this is the nth one. So the the so you can call Vn minus 1 the potential here, Vn, uh, Vn plus 1, no? and Vn uh, minus 2, right? And therefore, you have a, a current going here that is Ian minus 1 and In and so on. And at the two ends of your capacitor, uh, you, you have charges Qn, uh, well, I decided to call it like this, minus Qn minus 1, Qn uh, minus 2, minus Qn minus 2, and this is the Qn, Qn minus, right? So do you understand? You, you, you can, so you can make a line, an infinitely long set of, uh, uh, I'd like you to write the uh, differential equation that describe the variation, for instance, of the potential here, okay? So you, you have to, to sort of, uh, compute the drop in potential across, uh, you know, the drop in potential here, right, and the drop in potential there by the fact that the Q is equal to, you know, Q is equal to CV, right, and, uh, and, the, and the drop in potential here, right, is going to be what? LDI dt, right? So, for instance, across there, well, DI dt. So you go across uh, and you should get to uh, differential equation because w why is the differential equation? Because you, you assume that uh, this distance, say, is a dx. So the drop in potential is going to be something like this, right? And this, for instance, is going to be L di dt. And the same for the charges. Then uh, you, you differentiate and you get uh, a single equation and then we discuss it. Uh, in this the, the, the equation, you can introduce L0 to be the, the, the inductance per unit length and C0 uh, the same, uh, the capacitance for unit length because you understand that you have an infinite number, so you take the. So the point is to derive from here a wave equation, right? And a wave equation is a second order differential equation in, uh, in space and time. Uh, uh, so, so please try. And uh, by solving this, you, you, you see then that uh, the propagation, for instance, of the potential follow a, a wave equation along this uh, circuit. And so it has a wave-like uh, solution. And in fact, that's what we are going to, to talk today is the, the Maxwell equation in the absence of sources. So we have been discussing the solutions of Maxwell equations when we had sources, then sources uh, uh, moving uh, uh, and accelerating, and we discovered that uh, uh, they were producing fields uh, that uh, were characterized by this retarded time. And in particular, if your sources were accelerating, we discovered that they were emitting radiation. Now, how about the Maxwell equation in the simplest case, that is in the absence of sources, right? In this case, we, we have that uh, the, diverg the divergences uh, all vanishes, and the curls, right, uh, of, of E, so in, in the MKS, or so international systems, 
satisfy this and also c square the curve of b uh, minus the dt e equal to zero. So I, I take uh, the charge density and the current density equal to zero, and I have my Maxwell equation in equations in in the absence of of sources. So now, uh, as I did. Uh, Previously, I assume that uh, my fields uh, have a, a time dependence that is uh, like a cosine, like a trigonometric function. Therefore, I, 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 I use the exponential, and then I, I'm assuming that the physical field is going to be the real part of that, uh, of that function. You see that if you plug in this, that means that the time derivatives, right, the time derivatives simplify. It's what I did last time. Uh, because now you have that, uh, that uh, this equation becomes just minus omega b, right? And this one, c square curl of b, c square curl of b plus i omega e is equal to 0. Hmm? So in other words, from this one, you see that uh, you can replace the curl of b by what? Just take it on the on the other side. So the curl of B is proportional to, the curl of B is proportional to E, right? And uh, similarly, the curl, the curl of, uh, uh, of, of E, you see, is, uh, the curl of E is proportional to, to B. In fact, this one, uh, You see, okay. Now, if I take the curl of this, uh, I can take the curl of both sides, right? Equal to zero, and then use this to replace the curl of B by E. I get an equation just for E. And similarly, you can do the same trick and derive an equation just for B. And what is this? Uh, Equation the, here you can use the, the the thing that this is the the gradient of the divergence of e right minus the Laplacian of e this this first term but you see the divergence of e for in absence of if you don't have any um, source uh, any charge density this uh, uh, vanishes and uh, minus I omega, then I replace this, so you get the minus and minus, so okay, minus omega c square e. So at the end of the day, you get the nice, uh, 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 you see, minus, here you get uh, uh, plus, minus, so they are both minus, so I can switch, this is equal to zero, so I get the, the Laplacian of e, that means the Laplacian of uh, each component of your uh, electric field plus omega square divided by c square, where omega is uh, the angular frequency of this motion, periodic motion that I'm assuming the solution has, uh, E, right? This vanishes. So if you don't have source, and similarly, you can turn this around and you get exactly the same equation for the uh, for the components of the of the magnetic field, so that uh, in fact you have two uh, identical equations, and they go under the name of Helmholtz Helmholtz Helmholtz. This is a German guy. Wave equation. Uh, which one you don't? This? This? Well, uh, rho is equal to zero, so what, what is the question? Uh, my question is, uh, when this is equal to zero, so how you can, uh, you can get, uh, you can get electric field? Uh, yeah, by this, this is equal to zero, 
no, the divergence is equal to zero, not the field. It's like saying the derivative of something is equal to zero does not mean that that something is zero. Well, uh, it means that uh, it has this particular form such that the divergence is equal to zero. Remember that uh, uh, the divergence is in like an integral over surface, a closed surface. So the divergence equal to zero means that uh, you are not producing new field. But typically, it's li like a wave, it comes in and then it goes out. So it has divergence zero, but that is not zero. Okay. So those are the, these wave equations uh, uh, that are a solution uh, for the electric and magnetic fields uh, uh, in, in empty space, okay? So let's study those a little more. Uh, of course, that's a, a set of solutions that are fundamental because you understand that electromagnetic waves. So first you discover what? First you discover that uh, you have solutions for Maxwell equations that are waves, because these are, uh, I hope you recognize these as wave equations, meaning, you see, you have a, a second derivatives, the Laplacian in space, and here is a hidden a second derivative in time, right? Because, you see, when you derive this twice, you get omega squared. So here you have, a, so this is typically a wave equation. You see, the wave equation is like a generalization of the harmonic oscillator, because if you, if you collapse this in one dimension, this looks exactly like an harmonic oscillator. In fact, it has a, a trigonometric-like exponential uh, with complex argument solution. In fact, waves are essentially a collection of harmonic oscillators, right? And uh, so this is a major discovery because we start out with the, uh, with the Maxwell equations where uh, apparently there was nothing like a wave here. In fact, we, we build this equation, thinking of the Coulomb, Coulomb force, then the, the, this ampere laws, I mean, all this stuff that has to do with the magnetic and electric fields, right? And the major discovery there by Maxwell was that, in fact, the electric and the magnetic fields were not two separate uh, entities, but they were uh, really interconnected because by varying a B field, you were producing an E field and vice versa, right? In fact, we are going to discover that from the point of view of uh, uh, relativity, they are really just component of a single object, okay? It depends how you move, because you understand that if you are moving with respect to a, 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 an electric field, you start seeing a, a, a B field somehow, right? So they must be connected, and we are going to look a little more on this. But here, it's even more than this, because when Maxwell... Uh, uh, solved these equations, he discovered that he had waves. And in fact, waves, you see, that uh, move with the speed uh, of light, right? Of course, uh, this is backward because he didn't write C here. He, he just wrote this uh, square root of epsilon naught uh, mu naught. But in fact, that uh, when you measure that, that's exactly the speed of light. So out of nothing, apparently, you get the third information that uh, light that uh, apparently has nothing to do with electricity or magnetism is just uh, electricity and magnetism. So you see the power of this uh, set of equations. Really, they re unify three fields that up to Maxwell were completely unrelated. Magnetism, electricity, and light. And since this is the case, you see, light, uh, it doesn't look electric, right? I don't know, not to me, but it's made out of this electric and magnetic field. So this is a major contribution uh, uh, to our understanding of the physical world, okay? And uh, how are these uh, waves? I mean, how are they made? There are many kinds of waves, you understand. Uh, as we already discussed, uh, you can have uh, waves like uh, in water, on the sea, uh, waves uh, of any kind. Uh, but uh, uh, let's just try to understand how these waves uh, uh, are. Uh. So you see, a solution for, for these equations can only be written in terms of uh, trigonometric function, right? Because it's a wave equation. So I can write the generic, uh, 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 well, uh, just a... Uh, uh, a wave, right, a wave, wave solution of Maxwell equations, or better, a wave solution of Helmholtz wave equations, 
is going to be some, some uh, amplitude that I call big A for, for the electric A, some, some value, right? So this is a fixed vector pointing in some direction. And then it has a trigonometric-like uh, uh, part that goes like K. So I introduce K to be uh, this, uh, this ratio, right? So K, uh, uh, it's, uh, 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 yeah. So I guess uh, let, let's normalize. Uh, well, it depends. Uh, uh, so beta, I mean, wh what is the speed? Uh, uh, so the velocity of this wave, right, is this, uh, this omega over c, OK? Uh, omega over k, and this is c, OK? So k is defined like this. And in fact, uh, I can uh, either identify this uh, as, a, as, a, as a vector, right, that is pointing in the direction of propagation of this uh, wave. And we will, so this is KN. Or I can pull it out and put a, a unit vector there pointing in the direction of the, of, of the wave. Whatever you prefer, it's the same. OK, do you understand this? Or, or right, so this is a wave. It moves with the, with the speed, right? Uh, that is given, you see, by uh, that, uh, that ratio. So k is uh, defined by the ratio uh, of omega over the c. And similarly, the, the B field now, it's, uh, it's, uh, it has some amplitude, again, uh, uh, big A, well, you, you can give the name you want, and then it has this, uh, the same kind of dependence, the special and time dependence uh, is, uh, is like that. OK? So k gives the direction of propagation. And uh, you see here, I, I essentially use the, the, curl equa the curly equations, but I can still, I still have to impose that uh, my uh, solution satisfy the first two, uh, the first two uh, um, uh, uh, Maxwell equation. You see that they are divergence of E. So a divergence brings down a K, right? You see, because you take a derivative. So these two implies that, uh, that, uh, um, uh, that k, this, uh, this, this uh, vector giving, giving the direction of propagation, uh, must be, you see, for the divergence of this thing to, to vanish, that means that both must, uh, must vanish, right? And uh, therefore, that means that uh, this, uh, this uh, um, uh, uh, amplitude as it, uh, as it is, is, is perpendicular. So this means that A and as well A, A of B, they are perpendicular to the direction of, uh, of, uh, of propagation, right? So that means that uh, if you have your, your uh, K vector, right, and then your E and B field, So first of all, this is telling you that the E is perpendicular to the K and B is perpendicular to the K, right? Yes. How about E with respect to B? Why I, I, I drew them like those? Well, then you look at this equation again, uh, right? Because you see this equation tells you that uh, the propagation vector K cross E, right, is equal to this omega B. So in other words, when I look at these uh, uh, amplitudes, uh, they must uh, satisfy that the A of B, that is this, must be equal to K over omega, say, cross uh, A E. So you see, remember the, the, 
the cross product, that means that uh, uh, you see that uh, B is perpendicular to E, and they are both perpendicular to K. So that's why I draw them uh, this way. And in fact, you also see that the, the size of E, essentially, the size of E, the absolute value of E, is omega divided by omega divided by k, so that there is a, a factor of c between e and b. So e is much bigger than b. <coughs> OK? So I learned essentially everything. Uh, about these waves, because now I can describe them. Uh, precisely. So they are trigonometric function oscillating, and the direction of their amplitudes, maybe here I should put uh, the amplitude is, is, is more correct. But uh, the, what, what I mean is that uh, I have that E is orthogonal to the direction of propagation, and B, you see, is orthogonal as well. Then E is orthogonal to B. They are all orthogonal to each other. And the absolute value of E <coughs> is C times bigger than the absolute value of B. So how does it look like these things when I, when I plot it in, in, in space? Right? So for a given instant in time, so I fix time and I look at the, uh, at the so you see E is, uh, is, it has this amplitude, and then it, it is like a cosine in, uh, in space. So I don't know, here it's a bit, uh, uh, it may be like uh, something like this, right? Let's see if I can do it. Uh, so it goes like. If this is z, for instance, this is x and this is y. Y b, it's orthogonal. So it starts like this, and it, then it goes inside, and then it's outside, like this, right? And this z is the direction of propagation. This for, for fix at, at a given instant in time. So that's the wave, right? You see that uh, in space. It os oscillates, it's like a cosine. There are two waves in a way, right? Because they, they have these two components. And, and then uh, you must think uh, also in time, also you have this oscillating behavior as time uh, is changing. So that's why it's a traveling wave, right? It's a wave traveling in time with the, uh, what we will define in a second, that is uh, this polarization that are orthogonal to the motion the direction of, uh, of the propagation. And they propagate at the speed of light. Well, I erase it, but the V here is omega divided by k. To see. So that uh, coming out from that light, that uh, is exactly something like this, even though you cannot see it. Uh, well, that is not quite true because this is, you see, it's called a monochromatic wave because it has just a single frequency. In general, say the light coming from, from these uh, uh, things, uh, well, this is pretty, well, no, it's not. Um, uh, or from the sun is a superposition, right, of many of these with different frequencies. And I'll come back to this in a second. Okay? Questions? So you see, the next step is to, so we have described the things, is uh, to look more carefully on these amplitudes, and in particular, what is called the polarization. The polarization is the, 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 the way this amplitude in front of the wave uh, behave, right? You can have various things. But uh, you understand that uh, because of these uh, properties, right, that we wrote here, you see, this is a, uh, the, the first and most important, it, it is always orthogonal to the direction of propagation. So the oscillation takes place in a plane that is orthogonal to the direction of motion. So to describe this oscillation, you need two vectors, right? And these are called the polarization, polarizations of this wave. Okay, that's all, it's true for, for any wave, but because, you see, 
Uh, in principle, you could have three polarizations because uh, you, you can have oscillations in all planes. But because of this constraint, this oscillation has to take pla place in a plane. So you really have two independent polarizations. You can describe the arbitrary polarization by just using two vectors. So now we, we pick these vectors. Uh, and uh, of course, there are various possibilities uh, because uh, you can take two uh, So as I said, because of this constraint, you have two polarization vectors fully describing this part. So this is completely clear now. And now we want to fully describe this part here. So let's call it epsilon 1 and epsilon 2. And the simplest choice is uh, uh, like this. There are two vectors okay, uh, uh, pointing in some directions. And you see this is called linear polarization. OK, so you see, I, I write the, the my E field. I can decompose this general vector telling me how the E field is as a certain superposition of two mutually orthogonal uh, uh, vector, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, in such a way, you see, that uh, these are unit vectors. And then the arbitrary vector is built on the basis of this. Uh, so I'm spanning this orthogonal plane by these uh, two. And then you just give me the components uh, along these two directions, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, of the two linearly linear polarization. And uh, you have completely described uh, your wave. Right? So if you give me the frequency and the propagation vector, then the two components along the, uh, the, the two polarizations of this, uh, you have completely described your, uh, your wave. Similarly, B. It's just the, the same thing. OK, I, I don't need to write it. Just these two vectors. So my, my so this is propagating. The, you have a, some oscillation in this plane, and it's propagating. You see, it's a plane, so I can introduce two unit vectors. And then uh, whatever the E field uh, oscillating here, it will have some component E1 and E2. And by giving me these two components, you completely describe this vector, right? So these are the polarization. Of course, you can also pick uh, a different set. So I guess, <coughs> yes. Just, so in other words, I introduce here the, the two. Uh, now, just for the E field, I can introduce here these two directions, and then uh, by give me, you, you give me this component, right, the E1 and E2, and this completely describes the E part of the wave. Then you do the same for the B. Yes? Is the example that plane is moving? The plane is moving. Yeah, but it's moving. Yeah, but it's moving. You know how it's moving. It's moving like this. No, the, the only time dependence is here. By assumption, I'm assuming that this is the time dependence of the solution. So they oscillate, but uh, following this, uh, this rule. So the, 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 the length of this vector I is going to be a function of t with this frequency, right? But it's still completely described by this. I mean, here is e1, e minus omega t. So the size of this is, a, is varying like a cosine of omega t. But it's still completely described by this. You see, this is completely, it's a completely unique uh, 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 solution. If you give me this, 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 and this, this completely defines this uh, solution in space. I mean, there is no ET here. That, is, is that your question? Because I, I've assumed that this is the shape of the solution. This is a wave. Otherwise, not a wave. Yes? But there is no if here. I, I already told you how it moves in time. 
like this. So everything is specified. As I said, there is no trick here in which E1 is changing in time. It's a, it's a special solution that we call a wave. I mean, it's not the most general solution. We discussed the most general solution the other time. But this is a very simple solution that satisfies the, the, the equations in empty space. And this is what we call a wave. So, yes? The, with the what? Yeah. It's a cosine, no? I, I, I don't. I'm, uh, I mean, this component here is going to be e one pointing in the direction of the polarization one, the cosine of this uh, of this stuff here. Why do you have so many objections to this that is very simple and no objection to what I did uh, on Wednesday? It was much more complicated. That was surprising me. I mean, this is a very simple function that you know why we discussed a very complicated situation on the other day. But OK. So the other was ho so hopeless that you didn't ask anything because you decided what you just had to, to, to wait. I will stop and move on. <laughs> But here you, OK, it's OK. OK, is that clear now or? In fact, as I, as I uh, so <coughs> as I said, I mean, you, 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 you have, uh, so I don't know, just to make it, so in the plane, in, this is a plane, right? So you have two direction. Uh, so this epsilon 1 points here, this epsilon 2 points there. So this is, uh, so if you have E that is like this, right, you have E1 epsilon 1, this component, and uh, E2 epsilon 2, that is this component here, right, okay? And you see you can even define the, the angle here with respect to epsilon 1 that is going to be the arc tangent, as usual, of, uh, of uh, E2. Right, and uh, and uh, e is the square root of. So it just uh, you decompose this vector e that was this or what I call a e there, in the in the along these two. Uh, you see that, uh, uh, however, you sometimes it's more useful to pick uh, another base. This is a possible uh, basis for this uh, two-dimensional space, but you can also pick another basis. In particular, you see here what the uh, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are characterized is they have the same phase. But you can think uh, of taking, uh, for instance, E2 equal to E1 plus some, uh, some phase, like I phi. Right? They, they have exactly the same phase. But maybe I, I, I put E2 equal to some, uh, uh, uh. then uh, they are called, uh, say, elliptical polarizations. And a particular case is that if you take this phase to be exactly uh, 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 pi over 2, right? Then you understand that you are expanding on a new set. So e, your E field, but the same holds for, the, for B. That is E, right? This, uh, and then it epsilon 1 plus minus I epsilon 2, right? because I take phi equal to e to the i pi divided by 2, and then I have the usual common phase for this monochromatic wave. Okay, So now I have two possibilities here, right? depending if I take plus and minus with the i. And this I call uh, two new polarization, epsilon plus and epsilon minus. So now it's slightly different. These are called, uh, I, I think, uh, um, circular polarizations. It's just another pos possible set, polar polarizations. This, this, these are the circular polarizations, right? 
uh, and they come from the gene generic, uh, 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 from the generic uh, elliptic polarization. If you take the two epsilon one, epsilon two, to be just out of phase by 90, 90 deg degree, by um, pi over two degrees. So yes. Yes. So here uh, with the scale of coordinates, we have this without medium to go back and down. Medium. Yes. You mean? Uh, no. He, this is the solution. Uh, yeah, empty space meaning there are no sources. Yes. Of course, then uh, they also they they hold also if if your wave uh, goes through some medium. I, I'll come back to this. But uh, uh, you don't have uh, any source. So you don't have free charges and free currents here. No, I mean, ah. I really have that our solution is empty space where we don't need any source. But uh, as I said, that this is, it, it will also be true if you have your wave like here through some medium. Yes, but we can, our comes here. So you, you want to see how they are changed if you go through some medium or not? I, I'm not sure. I well, just in empty space, you have a, we already discussed this. Uh, you, you don't have to understand, just uh, you, this is a vector and it's well defined in empty space and it goes back and forth. So that's a wave in empty space for you. Yes. Yeah, it's, the, it's exactly the same because they are related, right? You see, they, you don't have to, you don't have independent polarization for the electric and magnetic field. You, you just have the, the polarization of the or your wave because the wave is, is locked in and, and you have the E and the B field that are so once you have defined in the, the polarization of the E field you see also the B field polarization are defined because they are locked in I mean it's an electromagnetic you cannot have one without the other you don't have an electric wave you can always have an electric magnetic wave because you understand that is the, is the E field varying in time that generates a B field varying in time. You need one to have the other. If you, you cannot have just an E field because uh, you have a constant E field, but that is not a wave. <coughs> so uh, this new set uh, is called circular polarizations. And uh, so uh, you see, uh, uh, you can decompose uh, here I decompose the, my, my uh, E field in, in, in the projecting the components along these two linear polarization, but I can do the same by projecting along, uh, uh, you see the, if you write this down, uh, it, it's like a, a, the, 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 the E plus uh, is like a, a vector describing the motion in one direction right, the circular motion in one direction and the other in the other direction. So the arbitrary E, again, can be just described using these two, uh, these two uh, components, okay? So sometimes people talk about linear polarizations when, uh, when it's useful to, at uh, some other time, about circular polarizations or even more arbitrary elliptical polarizations. Uh, in general, light uh, is not polarized, as they say, right? It comes as a superposition of different polarization. For instance, the light from the sun is not polarized. But it gets polarized if, uh, if it gets reflected, for instance, right? Say if you have light uh, 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 that uh, come from the sun and then it gets reflected by, by some water, for instance, then the light from there is polarized because you see the reflection kills all the polarizations that are orthogonal to, to, the, to the reflection plane. So you only have the, uh, and that's the principle of, you, you know, polarize uh, glasses for, for the, how do they work? I mean, that's the way they work. That you, you have a, 
they let through only uh, polarizations in this direction, right? But because the reflected light has this polarization, it does not get through. So if you look at uh, la, uh, the sun reflected from, uh, uh, from water with polarized glasses, you don't see that uh, component. So it reduces the, the, the effect of, of sunlight. That's the idea of polarized glasses. But this is a fascinating thing, you see, because uh, uh, you have... Uh, uh, I remember as a kid that uh, I was given two uh, uh, polarized glasses. And you see, the nice thing is that if you have just one polarized glasses and then you look at light, uh, uh, you kill some light, right? So that's not so surprising because uh, you can think that light was absorbed somehow. It is not, but it was. But what is really wonderful is that if you have two polarized and then you, you put one across the other, you sort of regenerate light. So by rotating this, you, you, you produce light in a way. So that's harder to understand. I mean, because that is not, you know, it's not that something is absorbed. Something is created, but clearly you, you are not creating light there. But it's just this fact of the polarization. I mean, light is, uh, is made of two polarization, and you can kill or, or create some polarization by rotating some appropriately polarized glasses. So, I mean, waves since they were discovered, they fascinate in physicists because they are really fascinating. I mean, and uh, I think they are still fascinating. The physics of light uh, and uh, in general waves is, is really fascinating. And uh, I mean, it would deserve a class just uh, on that, just, uh, just the physics of, and in fact, there are many textbooks just about, just about waves. Unfortunately, we, we have to compress all this knowledge uh, in just uh, uh, one class, so I mean, I cannot. I, I, it's clearly, I cannot do justice to to the subject. But uh, but I encourage you to read about uh, waves because uh, a lot of physics is there. And after all, then they come up back in quantum mechanics because at the end of the day, everything is made of waves. So, how about the pointing vector? This is the the last thing one can. So I have my solutions are given by, by this, and I know that uh, uh, one half of E cross B, right, in, in, uh, in this MKS uh, or international unit is my uh, pointing vector. But you see, I, I can immediately compute this because I have all these nice uh, 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 relations that essentially the B field uh, here, right, uh, is just the... the it's just k cross the e, so with the factor of c, right? So this essentially comes out as uh, just uh, e cross k cross e, right? Uh, and, and therefore, it's just uh, 1 over 2c um, k, right? The, 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 uh, I forgot the, uh, there is a k downstairs, right? So I get over k, 1 over 2c, k, uh, and then you have the, the square of e. So the pointing vector, as, as, as physically would expect, points in the direction of the propagation, because after all, remember, the pointing vector is like the momentum, the density of momentum of your electromagnetic field. So it must go in the direction of the propagation of this wave. And the, the, the size is given by the square of, the, of this uh, uh, amplitude of, of your E component. Or if you divide by, by C, of course, it, it comes with the, with the B. And you see, I can rewrite this. Uh, uh, remember that the, the density, the energy density, yeah. This is the pointing vector, right? Uh, so I just replace B with the, what I have here. You see B. Well, I erase it, but uh, B is just uh, K cross E divided by K. Ah, it's right here. Ah? K with, with the factor of C. CK. What is? This, uh, didn't I define the, the pointing vector to be one half? I think the pointing vector in MKS or international units, it's one half.
Okay. Uh, uh. I think it has to be like some kind of like uh, behavior. But it's not important. I mean, uh, okay. Uh, uh, so you can remove the one half if you don't like it. Uh, I, 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 but uh, you remember that uh, one half, one half was the density of energy. So the, the point I want to make is that uh, is like uh, the density of energy. Then you have a, 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 a unit vector in the direction of propagation, and here some. Okay, I don't know if you have the two or some factors of c. Okay. So what I want to say is uh, 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 that uh, you have that the pointing vector you see is proportional to the density of energy. This is the pressure that you have just because you have radiation. Because you have these waves coming out from, for instance, from the sun, you have some pressure. So if you have a big uh, uh, sail, right, that you open up, uh, for instance, here, then this, uh, the, the, the electromagnetic light coming from the sun will push the sail because it has this, uh, this uh, momentum that is proportional to this uh, uh, density. And so this is what it comes from uh, radiation. Of course, we cannot feel this because it's not that big. You need a really a big sail. But in principle, that's the best way to travel you know, outside our galaxy because you don't need an engine like, uh, you know. We used to, well, we still do in, uh, in uh, 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 on the sea. It's like if you had the wind, right? Okay. So, uh, um, how about? Uh, uh, in fact, now the next question is uh, what happened when uh, uh, we know that uh, when you have light going through two, through two different media, we have refraction and reflection. So how is this uh, rephrased in the language of, uh, of these electromagnetic waves? Well, it, it's very simple. So now I want to study maybe what uh, oh no, you, 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 I, I thought that what I thought you wanted to know. But uh, OK, we study. So uh, now uh, we study this in empty space, right? But in general, they are not in empty space because empty space uh, is rather scarce. Uh, I mean, it's not easy to find empty space uh, on Earth. So in general, you have waves going through to, to, to media, each of them characterized by the certain epsilon and mu, right? We, we didn't discuss much about this because it's, 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 it's complicated, but uh, that much uh, I told you, right, that uh, you have your Maxwell equations uh, 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 for macroscopic media, they are characterized by this function epsilon and mu that they can be quite complicated, but here we assume that they are just uniform function uh, constant so uh, in space so that they are just two like uh, you have light coming from air going into the water and that is something that people knew for a long time that there are some precise laws for instance this uh, law of so, you know part of the lights get uh, 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 reflected right and some get uh, uh, refracted right and uh, uh, it's not that they are completely trivial because the angles changes. And in fact, if you look something underwater, gets uh, this uh, well-known uh, refraction angle. So how does it work here? I mean, we, we have waves. We claim that uh, these waves are light. So how do we, we, we must be able to recover uh, everything that was known about light before, right? Because this is one of the characteristics of, of progress in physics is that it's not that you just have a new theory, but your new theory explained everything that was known plus something new. No? 
it's like, I hope this is clear. I, I, I mean, if you make a theory that just explains something new, but not everything that was already new, that's essentially you, uh, not very useful, okay? This is a characteristic of, of crack pots. I mean, some people who come uh, with new ideas, right? They, they just say, okay, I have this new model that explains everything. Yeah, but it does it explain everything? No. <laughs> so that, that you know that is completely useless because it's not that you have to explain something. Like, uh, say, relativity is not that relativity uh, explains just one thing. It explains everything that we knew, we knew Newton, and, uh, Maxwell, and then something new. That's the way we, we, we make progress. Uh, so, okay, so uh, I think uh, this, uh, this, uh, this was essentially written down by this guy, Fresnel, this refraction and uh, reflection. So let's uh, uh, recover some of them. So le let's look uh, for instance. So I have a, a, an electromagnetic wave. And as I said, uh, uh, this is, uh, so E, is equal to this uh, uh, amplitude, okay? Uh, I don't know, uh, let's call it E naught now because that's uh, how I decided to call it here. It doesn't matter. This is described by the polarization and, and so on. And that's, uh, that's the wave. And as I said, B was this C, right? But now uh, this C, I rather write it in terms of this uh, epsilon and mu, right? Because that's uh, what I want to, to, to keep track. So this is epsilon mu, right? You remember? Because B was 1 over C, E. 1 over C is the square root of epsilon mu. Epsilon naught and mu naught in empty space, but in general. Uh, uh, and then I have this key, K cross E divided by the value of K. Okay, so already from there you you know that the velocity of light is not the same uh, everywhere. I mean, uh, if, in the medium in general, the velocity of light because these are less than uh, so usually light slows down, right? Uh, and uh, so c is the velocity of light uh, in uh, in the vacuum in empty space. Okay, that is epsilon naught and mu naught. But in general, light. We know that the uh, effect uh, in water goes lower than in the air, and so on and so forth. In fact, in particular conditions, it can even go faster than, uh, than, than uh, but uh, this is the, 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 the phase velocity, as I will discuss in a second. Um, okay. So how does the, so Fresnes laws were that if you have light coming in, right, let's say it comes in here, so this is K, I have a trend of, of, uh, of, that, uh, uh, of this wave uh, characterized by E and B given uh, there, so this is my electromagnetic wave, so let's say K is, is going this way. So I have, uh, 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 right, uh, I have some uh, uh, refract, so usually you have to draw this, then you get uh, the, uh, the, so let's call this Z. So this is the refracted direction that is going to be a new, no, y, uh, it comes in described by K, then it gets refracted, so it's K prime. And also reflected with the K prime prime. Okay, so this is what uh, N, and the Fresnel stuff has to do with these angles, clearly. So if I call alpha this, I guess I should call beta this and gamma this. Huh? What? Well, they are arbitrary for the moment. The Fresnel's law tells you how this is equal or not equal. I don't know. I want to I want to uh, discover this by my using my Maxwell e equations. And uh, so it, this was uh, here. So then inside the, the I have a e <coughs> prime, right? That is just the same story, except that uh, I have to put uh, this k prime omega prime t. And similarly, B prime must be now epsilon 
epsilon prime mu prime k prime cross uh, this uh, e prime divided by k prime. Uh, and then I have the refracted one that I'm not going to, to write, but uh, they are just the same story with two primes. So this is uh, re, uh, re, uh, the, the refracted, and this is the reflected. The one came back. So how I, I, I'm going to solve this problem? Well, I have to go back to one of our first uh, classes where this, yeah. You? The milieu. No, this medium, no, they are not the same. Huh? This is one, and this is two. They can, you want them to be the same? If they are the same? No, these are, so this is a, this is water, and this is air. I don't know. Or, uh, I don't know, whatever. This is the simplest example. We are all familiar with this example, right? Light coming in, and if you go on the seaside, tomorrow is going to be a very springy day, so go there and uh, verify this uh, stuff. You, you will see reflection. Uh, you also see, if you put something in the water, you will see that it looks much shorter than it should be because of this. So do, I, that, that's the experimental aspect of this class. Okay, so uh, how I do, well, this is a problem with boundary conditions, you know, from the point of view of the Maxwell equation. This is, here you have uh, Maxwell equations in, in, in the, without sources, so those are the solutions. Here the same, and uh, here I have a problem of matching these solutions through the boundary conditions, but that we discuss. And uh, if you remember, probably not, uh, but uh, you should uh, review that because it's part of the Maxwell equations. Uh, uh, you see, this is a boundary, but it's a boundary. You see, you, we discussed the general situation in which at the boundary you could also have charges and currents, right? But here is the simplest example because uh, it's a boundary that is free of charges and currents. So if you remember the condition where the, the tangential, I don't know how to write the, uh, the tangential uh, component of E, the tangential component of, of E were conserved in fact this is always true but the, the general rule is that the normal component of D jumps by an amount proportional to the, the, the surface charge densities right so that's the general rule but here the surface charge density is zero so even the normal one so let normal is continuous, okay? How about uh, B? There was that uh, the tangential component of H, right, was uh, proportional to the, to the um, uh, density of currents on the surface, but again, because you don't have currents there, uh, that, that is conserved. And then, uh, of course, the normal part of B that always continues no matter what, uh, so that's uh, still, uh, still okay. So uh, please remember these things. I, I may even ask uh, at the exam something about this. Uh, uh, this is true only because k is equal to zero, uh, and this is true uh, only because sigma is equal to zero. So the surface charges. Okay, so now I can apply these boundary conditions. Uh, you understand, for this to be true, for this to be true, you, you have that uh, KR in, in the first, first medium in air, minus omega t, right, must be equal to K plus R minus omega prime t. Well, because it's an exponential, you could in principle have some uh, 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 multiple of 2 pi, so I don't know, call it m1 2 pi. And this must be also th th true for the, the one ca coming out, uh, coming back, some n1 uh, 2 pi, I don't know.
Now, this is, must be always true. So you see, in particular, it must be true when these are equal to 0. So this really is just uh, uh, you can forget about. I mean, you cannot exploit this uh, 2 pi invariance of the phase uh, of your exponential, because it must always be true. So it must, in particular, be true if you pick uh, this n uh, uh, m equal to 0. So that, from, from here, you, you immediately see that omega must always be the same. So that's the first information, that uh, the, the frequency of this wave is not changed by going across the, the, the two media. OK? And the k, what happened to k? You see k, uh, you have this factor um, omega c epsilon mu omega 2 c epsilon mu. Uh, K here, right? So uh, what I'm saying, so f first you see this, this factor must be the same. That is just telling you that everything takes place in a plane. So the component K does not get shifted uh, as it goes across. So it can only change the angle as described by Fresnel in the same plane. You see, here I, I, I draw everything, I drew everything on the blackboard assuming that this vector would change the angle, okay, from alpha to beta, but not off the plane of the blackboard. This is guaranteed by the fact that this, you see, these are the projection must remain the same. So everything has to take pla place uh, in, in the same plane, you see, because they, their component perpendicular to R must remain the same, so they must be in the plane. Uh, okay. Then uh, you see that uh, uh, if you take these and uh, you project out you, along these angles, Right, so it has to play, take place in a plane. Then uh, you see that k sine alpha, so the component of k projected in that direction, must be equal to k um, prime sine beta, must be equal to k uh, sine gamma, right? And because the, 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 the moduli of these two must be equal, you get that the sine of alpha must be equal to the sine of gamma. Or uh, alpha equal to gamma, right? So this angle must be equal to this angle. This is called the, how it's called, the Snell law, right? That... Uh, the, the, the incidence uh, angle is equal to the, uh, the, the reflected. How about the uh, refraction angle? Now, sine of alpha over sine of uh, beta, that is the, the, the ratio between the angle of incidence and the refraction angle, uh, is equal to k prime divided by k that you see uh, uh, is equal to the ratio <coughs> of, the, of, the, uh, of the product of the epsilon and mu uh, uh, factor. So the dielectric and the, uh, how is called this? The, the mu is called, uh, uh, do you remember? OK, uh, permitting, yeah. So, So uh, I don't know. This is uh, like this. In fact, these, these quantities, so this is the Snell's law. And the other law is that the, the, the ratio of the sines of these two angles goes like the ratio between the, and this, in fact, they get the name, right? Uh, 
the index of refraction. Usually, one is the vacuum, right? So then you take equal to one, and then the refraction is uh, proportional to that. And that comes from, uh, from the fact that k is related to, to the omega c by this factor here. Of course, in the vacuum, then uh, you get just uh, the, the results that we wrote before. So you see, indeed, we, we recover uh, the two fundamental laws uh, 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 written down by Fresnel. Uh, the Snell's law, that this, in fact, they are the same angle. And then that beta depends how the end prime it can be larger or smaller depending on uh, whether the end prime is larger or smaller uh, in going from one medium to the other one. And everything takes pla place in a plane. And the other important information is this, that the frequency of your monochromatic waves is not shifted, it does not change in going across this, uh, this interface. Okay? Only k, that is the direction of propagation, uh, gets changed. Okay, so that's uh, 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 is another important piece of information about the electromagnetic waves, and you see it can be very easily derived just by from Maxwell equations. That everything is included there. You don't need anything. You, all this Fresnel, Snell stuff, you know that uh, you are taught. At the beginning, then uh, if you remember Maxwell equations, you don't have to remember all the rest because everything is in there. And if it's not there, it's not there. I mean, so if something that cannot be derived from that means that is wrong. Uh, how about these things? Uh, these, these were uh, monochromatic waves. So um, uh, probably I, I won't, well, we finished uh, next week. Mm, so there are two, two things here that uh, uh, are important to remember. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, this is a very broad subject about waves, and uh, so I, I cannot cover it. But uh, there are two ideas that are important for you to, to remember. So let me just tell you. Uh, you see, here I, I, we assume that this, uh, uh, for, for instance, the dielectric constant did not depend on, on, on the frequency, right? I didn't say uh, epsilon of mu of omega. I mean, I just say epsilon and mu, and it was, you know, for any omega, you had the same epsilon and mu. This is the case for many important uh, 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 media. Uh, uh, they are called non, uh, probably you heard about the dispersive For instance, the air, right, is a typically non-dispersive medium for, for sound waves, right? That's, uh, you, how do you know that? Uh, you see, uh, if you go to a concert, you hear the, the, the sound uh, at the same time, independently of the frequency of the sound, right? It's not that you first hear the violins and then the cello. I mean, but because the medium is, is such that uh, uh, the, the, say, the, the omega k, in other words, is not the, say, epsilon is not the function of, of omega. So you have the, the wave, I'm talking about the sound now, but uh, this is true also for the electromagnetic waves. Uh, sounds uh, uh, travels at the same speed, in other words, uh, independently of the frequency, right? This is a common experience, as I said, if you to go to a concert hall for a concert, uh, you hear all the sounds coming at the same time. I mean. But there are other media uh, that are dispersive. That's what I want. So non-dispersive are very simple because you have everything uh, independent of the frequency. But there are other media in which uh, you do have dispersion. And in this media, you, you expect a higher frequency to, to reach you at a different time than lower frequencies. And many medias are like that. So for a dispersive media, uh, uh, you, you, you have uh, uh, the, the uh, omega depending uh, function uh, uh, of k, okay, or, or vice versa. So they propagate with different. 
And then uh, you also, uh, as I said, that we talked only about uh, 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 monochromatic waves, but in general, a wave, so a general solution of Maxwell equation, is going to be the one I wrote, right? Uh, uh, but uh, uh, you see, depending on k, I put, uh, so let me write it in one dimension that is simpler, something like this. So as a superposition of many, uh, let me put the, the Fourier transform things like this. You see, I discussed just for a fixed k, just one, and that is a monochromatic wave, okay? But in general, you, you have a, a bunch of waves traveling together, and they are given by some superposition uh, characterized by this. So the monochromatic one is where here you just put a, a, a k minus k naught, uh, delta function, so you fix the k, then you see I, I have exactly the solution I wrote uh, before. But in general, it's not true, okay? And that's always, because you see, it, it's very unrealistic to think of a pure monochromatic wave, because that means it's a wave that to, from minus infinity to plus infinity was always the same. That's the monochromatic wave. And in real life, you never have those. You always have packets. That is, you have a uh, a wave u of x uh, uh, for a, a, say at a given instant in time, right? You have something that starts out and then goes like this, with some uh, delta x uh, uh, width in space x. So you see, a wave like this is the superposition of an infinite number of components, right? This comes from the Fourier analysis. Right, you you can describe any f uh, wave shape by Fourier transform, but uh, unless it's a monochromatic one that is described by a single frequency, you, in general you have a, a very complicated superposition in your Fourier transform, right? And this is, in fact, you know that uh, a characteristic thing is that. Uh, so to describe this, you need a certain superposition in the k space of the Fourier transform in such a way that a k has this shape and then when you Fourier transform you get this shape in the ordinary space. And you remember that the fundamental, uh, so this is the, the, the spread in, in, in the Fourier space and probably you remember that it's always true, you know, if you, if you describe the spread in X and the spread in K, so the spread in the ordinary space and the spread in the Fourier space is always bound by this. That's the origin of uh, this uh, Heisenberg uh, things. So in a way, it has nothing to do with the observer. I don't know what uh, you were told, that the observer disturbs. There is no, dis you see, has nothing to do with anybody observing anything. It has to do with the Fourier transform. That's the correct way to understand the eyes. Uh, himself, he didn't understand it correctly. Uh, it's often the case. I mean, the, the first guy who does something does not even understand it. <laughs> OK. So in general, you see it's a complicated matter because uh, you start out with a packet like this. Uh, and just remember uh, what you learn in quantum mechanics, this guy tends to, to, to disperse because it's propagated in a dispersive medium where omega depends on k. So the different frequencies travel at different speeds. And therefore, this packet changes shapes. So it's a very complicated. And this is where most of the study of waves propagation come in because in general, you study propagation of waves that are not monochromatic. The monochromatic wave is, is not very interesting. It's the same everywhere. Uh, it starts from minus infinity and it goes on to plus infinity. It's useful in understanding the property, but it's not something that you find uh, in the real world, right? And uh, in the real world, you have all these things. So, I mean, I don't really have time to, uh, in fact, I, I don't even have the knowledge to, to really de delve in depth on this problem. But uh, the only thing that is important to remember, maybe at this level, is that therefore the dependence of your omega on the on the on the uh, on the k right can again be expanded. So you have the monochromatic case, then you have a Taylor expansion, right? Depending how this function is, it could be very complicated. But the leading term 
write is this uh, first derivative times k minus k naught, right? We, we already know and love our Taylor expansions, okay? And uh, this quantity here is called group velocity. Have you already heard about this? So, uh, because before I define in this uh, V to be omega divided by C, right? And uh, everybody sort of agreed that this was the velocity of the wave. But you see, this actually is what is called, so omega in general is a function of K, so one should be careful. Uh, and this, is, so, and, and this, uh, I, I raise it, but it was here, it was like C divided by this index of your medium. Like this, you can also write it. And, uh, and uh, so we, we did, uh, in the previous blackboard, I was assuming that there was no K dependence because that's true for monochromatic waves. But in general, there is this K. This is called uh, the phase velocity. So the phase velocity is just the ratio uh, between the, the uh, this angular velocity omega and the velocity uh, c, uh, and this is the derivative if you want. But of course there are two different concepts. If you have a monochromatic wave, okay, there is no difference. But in general, if you have a packet or something, uh, you have to worry about the group velocity rather than the phase velocity. And uh, if you... Well, I guess I'll stop then. Uh, uh, if you, uh, uh, you can uh, also rewrite this uh, in, uh, in, a more, uh, in a more unfamiliar way, but uh, the one that people use is because you see, uh, I can uh, plug uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, definition, right? Uh, I want to rewrite the group velocity in terms of this uh, index. That is what you measure in practice uh, for a medium. So to do that, uh, I need to, uh, to do what? Uh, uh, well, you see, omega of k is equal according to this, uh, to this uh, 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 ck divided by nk, right? So if I take the derivative of this stuff, I get uh, C, D, K, D, uh, let's see, D omega, N, so it's the derivative of this uh, minus uh, D, N, D omega, C, K, divided by N square, right? I take the, so this is D omega, D, uh, K. So I'm computing this group velocity. And you see now, so I can, Collect it as c on a square n uh, n uh, d k d omega minus k d n d uh, d omega. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the other hand, uh, you see that uh, uh, so uh, n d k d omega, right? So d k d omega. This uh, is n squared divided by c plus k d n d omega. And d omega d k, d omega d k, so d omega d k, therefore, is equal to c uh, n plus k c divided by n d n d omega. But KCN, you see, is just uh, omega, right? So this is the formula you, you, you find. So N depends on omega. Omega, DN, D omega, that depends on omega. So that's the formula you find for the velocity of group, the group velocity. In general, in terms of parameters that uh, you can measure, so for a given medium with the uh, index N, that depends on the frequency, you are going to get this uh, group velocity. Now, you see that uh, uh, it can be, 
uh, you see, it's always smaller than C. Okay, and then you can have uh, 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 you can have uh, normal dispersion when this uh, 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 group velocity. The, so you see, depending it, take, it depends on the derivative of the index of the uh, uh, the refraction index of with respect to omega. If this is larger than zero, so if this this is normal dispersion. Okay, it increases with the with the frequency. Then uh, this is this you see. Then first of all, c over n is the phase velocity. So v is less than the phase and is less than c. So that uh, is called the normal dispersion. That the group velocity is a little uh, less than the phase velocity. You can also have the other case. There are media in which, uh, 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 sorry, yeah, it, this is not, it, it's just the, the opposite is true. This is less than zero. And then you see that uh, uh, the, velo the group velocity is larger than the phase velocity. Okay. However, both, in both cases, uh, the, 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 the group velocity is less than C. Okay, so you will hear about uh, uh, media in which the group velocity is larger or less than phase velocity, and uh, so that is what takes place. In general, always the group velocity is less than C. C is the limit, uh, the, 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 what do you say, the highest speed uh, of propagation for, the, for these waves. Uh, but uh, uh, meaning that the group velocity is, is always less. In fact, information carried by these waves is not carried by the phase velocity, it's carried by the group velocity. I mean, usually in a monochromatic case, they are the same things, but really uh, the information is carried by the group velocity. The phase velocity is really the, f the, the phase velocity, is the, phase, is the velocity of the phase of that exponential. That carries no information. I mean, it can be shifted, but the group velocity is where really what is uh, uh, is carried uh, by by the wave. So, when we will talk about uh, the speed of light, we will always think that. Uh, 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 I mean, when we compare the the speed of propagation to to the speed of light, we will think of the group velocity of this. Uh, uh, propagation and not the phase uh, velocity. There are places where you have uh, phase velocities. OK, yeah. N, the index of. Uh, N was the N is the index this, of N is the square root of epsilon times mu. Is the is the the index of refraction in so it comes in the velocity depends on this, right? So this V is equal to C where that is equal to Epsilon not there, et cetera, uh, in general. So that, but uh, then the, 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 the interesting point here is that that is depends uh, on the frequency, on the, on the K. 